Hello and welcome to this discussion about the new freeform surfaces in Code 5 version 11.4. These surfaces were released actually in Code 5 11.3, which became available at the end of December 2019. What I'm going to do today is walk you through some of the interface changes and also the use of these freeform surfaces for a simple optimization so you can become familiar with the details of how they work. So what you see here inside Code 5 right now is the surface properties for one of our new freeform surface types, the Q2D freeform A-sphere. The other new surface type is the extended fringe Zernike polynomial surface. These are easily selected from within the drop-down list when you want to apply the surface type that you require for your design. So here we have the free freeform surface type, and you see some different parameters here that deal with the geometry of the surface. Uh, I'm going to commit the change because I want to make sure that Code 5 knows I really want to make this surface a Q2D freeform. And let's have a look at what that looks like in 3D. Uh, what I have now is actually a conic, uh, an off-axis conic section that I'm using in Code 5. One of the unique things about Code 5's new freeform surface types is they allow you, as the user, to specify an off-axis angle called omega, which will select the portion of the surface that you'll use in your work. And then they also allow, in addition to that off-axis section of the conic as the location of the local coordinate origin, the additional offset in X and Y of any polynomial departure that you apply to the surface. So this gives some nice flexibility to the designer when working with these new surfaces in Code 5. In the next section of this discussion, I'm going to show you a little bit about how to optimize a small field for this off-axis parabolic reflector so you can see what those details look like inside the optimizer in Code 5. Okay, for this final section of the small tutorial on the new freeform surfaces in Code 5, I'm going to show you how to quickly optimize for a small field that I've put on this parabolic reflector, this off-axis parabola. Um, I added a, a field of, of, in addition to the on-axis field, plus or minus 0.25 degrees, which is not a, a large field, but you do see there's significant coma in the spots and so why don't we try and uh, get rid of that now using automatic design and some of the capabilities of the freeform surfaces. So here you see the off-axis angle parameter is a variable and I've also got the curvature of the surface as a variable, the radius. But in addition the coefficient table Code 5 offers can allow you to select the symmetry condition you'd like for the system. Now this system, I'm choosing YZ plane symmetry because I have the system tilted only about uh, the x-axis. Uh, and I can actually select variables or, that are XZ symmetric, or I can assume all symmetry, uh, no symmetry assumed, excuse me, and all terms available. But So in this case, I'm going to use the YZ symmetry. I'm not going to vary any of these terms yet, but I wanted to bring that interface to your attention because it gives you a nice visual cue about which terms are varying and you can think about how that affects your design and it makes a, a simple visualization for you uh, to take care of varying only the terms that will be effective for the design work you're doing. So here I want to look in the optimization automatic design menu and I'm going to use step optimization and I would like to have a little bit finer ray grid, so I'm going to choose something like 0.1 instead of the default pupil fraction of 0.385. And so I'm going to make a little bit finer sampling, and I'm going to insert some specific constraints. One on the effective focal length, uh, let's target minus 75 millimeters, and I'll insert that. And then also I'm going to target some real ray trace data. The x-coordinate at the image plane default is 0. So I'll take that. Looking at the y-coordinate, 
for the chief ray at the image plane, also uh, the default target. Right now, the image plane is decentered. We're actually going to decenter the image surface to be centered uh, on the chief ray. So I'm going to insert that constraint. And then also the angle of incidence I'm going to have for the chief ray being zero. I'll insert that and close. For the output and exit controls, uh, I'd like to have optimization, draw the system in each cycle, and then create the error function chart uh, at the end so that we can see what the progress code 5 makes for this optimization. And for now, we're going to save these settings, uh, save as OAP off access parabola op optimization. And we'll overwrite the system the file that exists already. The reason I wanted to do that is I wanted to cancel out of the optimization in order to show you which variables are available just now. We have the radius and the thickness of the off-axis parabola surface, and we also have inside the surface properties for surface 3, we have the conic constant is fixed as a parabola, we have the off-axis angle varying, but in addition, we can review the decenters, uh, and you can see we have some decenter data and uh, angular offsets that are allowed on the image plane uh, in order to optimize for this off-axis parabola. So let's go back to our optimization now, and we can choose uh, to get there in a few different ways. Uh, I'm going to choose to do it through the optimization menu. And then we'll load those settings, load selected, and we'll say OK, and Code 5 will work on optimizing the system. We can see Code 5 very quickly brought the aberrations under control. And if you look at this uh, parabola now, you can see what the overall performance is, uh, is much improved. The spot diagram is going to be much improved. There's still a fair amount of residual aberration. And at this point, the remaining thing to do can be to add some freeform terms. Uh, and I can do that via the surface properties in the coefficient table. And I can select, um, right now I have YZ symmetric terms available. And you'll notice if I click through and highlight a few of these, let's go through r to the 13th. It's quite a lot of terms. And I'll vary the parameters. You'll notice that code 5 only varies the, very, the terms that are meeting the symmetry condition. And if I were to choose XE symmetric uh, symmetry condition, some of these are highlighted yellow because they don't meet that symmetry condition. Code 5 is letting me know that. So at this point, I can safely choose these YZ symmetric terms as variables. And then I can go back to my automatic design and I can repeat this optimization. And let's see if we can improve the performance. You can see the spot is getting much smaller. And we've gone to a slightly, we've improved the error function by about a factor of two and a half or so. And that's not a tremendous Im improvement, but it is an a significant improvement nonetheless. We can look at the size of the spots that are remaining as residual, and we can see that they have shrunk considerably from what we had just a moment before. So I hope this gives you a, a reasonable feeling for how the surface uh, new surface types in Code 5 function. The off-axis angle parameter can be varied freely. The X and Y offsets can also be varied for the position of the aspheric departure in order to help to make a better correction. The last thing that I would like to show is varying both the X and Y offset wouldn't make too much sense, but we can vary the Y offset of that aspheric departure and perform one more final optimization and let's see if code 5 can bring the spot size a little bit smaller. And indeed, it does. It improves slightly. Uh, you can see our spot diagram. Here we have, for our largest field, about uh, 11 microns RMS spot. 
And if we update that now, we're down below 10 microns for the RMS spot. So I think this should give you a reasonable feeling for how these new freeform surfaces behave. And thank you for your attention. I hope they can help you to be effective in your freeform designs with Code 5.